Hey guys, Mark Nice here of um, NiceDesign.com, and uh, today I'm going to show you guys how to do a quick abstract wallpaper, kind of like what you see here in the background, um, in a couple minutes. It really is very simple, it takes a few minutes. Um, this is a beginner's tutorial, so you don't really need to be that great at Photoshop to do any of this stuff. You don't need a Wacom tablet or anything like that. Um, so yeah, let's jump right into it. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to File New. Um, you're going to set your width and your height uh, on your screen size. So, for example, my screen size right now is 1440 by 900. Um, you want to do, you know, whatever pertains to your monitor. And then the resolution, I'd say about 300, just to make sure the quality is good. Okay. We're going to go to our paint bucket tool. Um, before we go any further, press D. And then... Um, you'll get your black and white um, colors, your black and white selections or on your palette. And then we're going to fill the canvas. Um, we're going to unlock our layer, change our layer, um, our blending mode on our layer to lighten. Then we're going to duplicate our layer once. Rename this layer default layer or original layer, black layer, what, you know, whatever. We're going to take our top layer we're going to go to Filter, Render, Lens Flare, and you're going to put a little lens flare somewhere on your screen. And I know if you're familiar with Photoshop, and, you know, or, or somebody who's better with Photoshop, they're going to be like, what is he doing with lens flare? But just bear with me. All right, so now we have a lens flare. And um, let's put a few more lens flares on. Remember to duplicate that original layer a couple times and just, you know, put lens flares all over the place. We're going to put a lens flare over here. We're going to put a lens flare somewhere over here. And we'll do two more lens flares. I'm holding Alt to speed duplicate, by the way. Um, you can just right click and do a duplication if you want. Oh, I'm going to copy that one at a time. Here we go. Now, we want to distort these lens flares so they don't just look like a bunch of lens flares. Um, let's start with our top layer and work our way down. We're going to go to Distort, Wave. Play a few numbers up here. Get something in the preview window you're, you're, you know, you're fond of. Click Randomize a couple times. And then keep it. Next layer, let's try... You don't have to use Wave, too. And you can do any sort of you know, process you want to, as long as you kind of stick to what I'm showing you. This time I'm going to try twirl. Keep going, keep changing each, um, each lens flare a couple times. Get something you like. And then um, a couple more here, and then we'll move on. And this last one, just for giggles, I'll do one more wave. All right, weird looking. Um, yeah, so we have a bunch of lens flares. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna highlight all of our layers. We're going to go Apple E or right click and just, or merge layers, sorry, merge layers. All right, we're almost done, believe it or not. Then we're going to go to Image, Adjustments, Hue and Saturation or Apple U for Mac users. We're going to click the Colorized option before we move any further. Change the hue a little bit, get a color you like, bump up the saturation to bring out said color. It's kind of neat. Then, um, finishing touches here, let's do Gaussian Blur, put it, you know, anywhere of this range that you're seeing me play with here, you know, seven, between 7 and 15, press OK, oh, sorry about that, you press OK, then you go to Edit, 
You go to Edit, Fade Gaussian Blur, Overlay, and check it out. Really neat stuff. Um, you tweak the opacity a little bit of your fade. So you bring out all the colors that you want. You press OK. Um, just for fun, I like to put some wind on it. I think it looks kind of cool. And then fade that wind so it's not too over the top. And obviously, after, you can play with the contrast. So yeah. Um, so once you get your the image that you like, just go uh, Apple Shift S. Save it. Uh, we'll call this weird wallpaper 2, since I already had one. Make sure the format is in JPEG. And then save it. Make sure it's a maximum file size so it looks good on your desktop. Then we go to change our desktop, and there it is. Cool way to make an abstract um, wallpaper that's your own and nobody else's. Um, like I said before, there's a lot of uh, bells and whistles here that we can play with. Um, if we step back a little bit before I flattened everything, let's say just for fun, um, I duplicated everything, then flipped it then did the entire process again you can see that we can get a cool effect every single time we do this and I mean this is a rushed version of what you can do you certainly don't have to follow me step by step you can take all the creative freedoms that you want when you're making these things um, I just think they're cool I think they're neat Put that Gaussian Blur back, fade it, and bring out that color. Said maybe some wind again. I like the wind. I think it's cool. And there you go. Again, just uh, save it and put it on your desktop. So yeah, this has been uh, Martin Nice of NiceDesign.com. Uh, just showing you a cool way to make abstract wallpaper that looks pretty cool in a couple minutes. So yeah, um, make sure you visit NiceDesign.com. If you like what I'm doing, just leave me a comment, subscribe to my videos, whatever you want to do. Bye.